Everyone wants to succeed in life, from the littlest determined go-getter to the biggest entrepreneurs in the world. And, and I was human. I am human, still. Whether you want to be an ambitious businessman, a sleazy seducer, or the biggest grifter this side of the rabbit-proof fence, success is key to keeping the wheels moving, the food on the table, and your missus in your house. You're hurting me! Stop it! Stop it, Lois! I give to you today a number of skills, tips, and tricks all designed with a single purpose of paving your way to success using psychology. Some of these are actually relevant and useful techniques you can use in everyday life, while others are just weird and manipulative ones that you can use to create your own version of American Psycho. No matter what, just know that I have stolen holy fire from the gods, and today, I'm giving it to you. Don't do anything f***ing illegal with it, okay? Tip number one, by using people's names, you can cause feelings of flattery. This is because humans are egotistical and just love the sound of their own names. By using someone's name, it allows them to realize that they've been acknowledged, in turn, providing a form of validation. If you've ever seen characters in films freak out after their idol or celebrity reads their name off a name tag, this is why. Fred, Fred, thank you. <laughs> he knows my name. He knows my name. This is a skill that all good leaders put into practice with their employees. Getting to know names allows you to show acknowledgement, and in turn, respect. Hence why I've spent most of my YouTube money on that massive large show outside my house. Tip number two, by using the power of leading questions, you can potentially change memories. By using leading questions or changing adjectives in a sentence slightly, you can potentially trick yourself and others into remembering events differently, or potentially events that didn't even occur at all. This effect illustrates just how unreliable memory can be. An area of study that Elizabeth Loftus has built her life's work around. To be technical, Loftus suggests that if someone is exposed to new information during the interval between witnessing an event and recalling it, this new information may have marked effects on what they can recall. The original memory can be modified, changed, or even supplemented. For example, if you were talking to someone who witnessed a car crash, using the term bumped may imply a lighter accident or using the term smashed may cause them to think the accident was more serious than it actually was. This is also known as gaslighting. You gaslighted me! You're a fucking villain! Oh, you want to present yourself as a victim? Tip number three. To be a dickhead and just ruin every single house party you're invited to, tell people straight up that you study psychology. They'll either have one of two guaranteed reactions. A, they'll think you're a mind reader and they'll just marvel their heads off, or B, they'll think you're a f***ing dickhead. In my case, they think I'm both at the same time anyway, so it doesn't make too much of a difference, honestly. Tip number four, eye contact can be one of the greatest ways to connect with someone. However, if maintained for too long, it can also be a withering weapon. Using it in a proper, sparing manner is the ultimate way to show respect and acknowledgement to someone. This is because it shows that you're paying direct attention to them. Pairing eye contact with body language has massive benefits and will help you in conversations, job interviews, and on dates. However, maintaining it without blinking will give the impression that you're here to kill a talk show host because of your midlife trauma. Number 5. Whether you want to use it as a cheeky little party trick, or if you're just genuinely deluded, cold reading is a legitimate technique you can use. Now, everyone's seen that TV show The Mentalist, or those old video clips of psychics up on stage claiming they can communicate with spirits. Most of the time, it's all a crock of shit, through the use of plants in the crowd or chemicals in the water. However, the technique associated with these acts, cold reading, may have some legitimacy behind it. Cold reading is essentially combining high probability guesses and broad statements with carefully crafted language and psychological tricks. By using this technique, a mentalist can narrow down the answer to pretty much anything, whether it be your name, a recent event, or your relationship status. Something that the Victorian government has legally forbidden me from using in public. Just fantastic work, Dan Andrews. Just, you've screwed me over again. Well done, mate. Great. Tip number six, to improve your mental health 100%, just don't talk to girls, okay? Just easiest bit of advice you can implement, just simple. Literally the easiest piece of advice to implement, lads, just become a man of God, disregard women and acquire currency. Or get yourself a cool ass scorpion jacket and drive for a living, whatever works. Tip number seven, if you ever feel stressed or overwhelmed with a whole bunch of approaching deadlines or tasks, simply try to use a little bit of organization. Sometimes we get caught up in a bit of a flurry of tasks and we get thrown off our game. Things are due soon, other things are happening, and we're starting to get a little bit stressed and overworked. While setting goals is usually good, we don't have time to structure anything comprehensive, at least most of the time. This is where reflection comes in. 
when I feel scattered with a whole bunch of tasks or deadlines, I just reflect on my current situation and organize my way out of it. In these situations, I suggest that you just write everything down, just vomit whatever's on your mind, such as tasks or schedules, onto the page. From here, organize it by prioritizing everything. What's due first, what's more serious, and what'll probably get you sacked from your job if you don't do it. From here, plan. How do we go about it? Draw a diagram, write a list, think about what needs to come first or otherwise. From here, pair this all with a deep breath, repeat the plan to yourself, and you'll be on your way. Tip number eight. To effectively memorize information, use rehearsal. If we're trying to study or memorize something for an upcoming exam or whatever, some techniques work better than others. Now, this is different for everyone, but for a lot of people, this technique helps. Sometimes we just get caught under a flurry of tasks and all kinds of crap coming up, and we start to shut down a bit. Skimming over a textbook like an annoyed year 12 is all well and good, but it doesn't press the information into your head as deeply as it could. Plus, using cue cards is great, but it's not the same thing as having everything memorized and ready to go. Instead, you can use a technique called rehearsal to ensure everything it's is organized. Stinks. It's Thanks. But in summary, rehearsal involves repeating stuff to yourself over and over and practicing it to memorize it. This practice allows information to consolidate within your memory. Specifically, the repetition allows information to move from your short-term memory to your long-term memory, where it gets stuck. This will work for memorizing studies, getting a song stuck in your head, or, if done consistently for 40 years, for mentally tearing strips off your husband. Number 9. To make achieving goals a little bit easier, consider breaking them down into smaller steps. All visualization and reflection are just fantastic techniques. Sometimes we get a couple more complex goals that we want to accomplish, which require a bit of deeper planning. And whenever you set out these goals, they can often become a little bit daunting. Therefore, breaking them down into smaller goals can make things way easier to achieve. This is where the SMART system comes into play. When writing goals, make sure they're specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and timely. This will allow you to specify your goals and in turn, make achieving them so much easier. Finally, tip number 10. To pull off a Jedi mind trick in real life, simply wave your left hand around like this, and from there, bring your right hand around like that. It'll convince anyone to do whatever you want. Now, some people call this technique the left right good night or others just refer to it as a cheeky gamer moment. However, I just consider it to be a fantastic psych technique through and through. And that's all the magical advice from the godly chalice of wisdom that I'll give to you today. Hopefully, I've given you some techniques that you'll be able to utilize and harness to their full effectiveness throughout your life. Please, take these skills to build, improve, and evolve, and make sure that you guard them with your life. I'm serious about that, by the way. I mean, if it comes down to like giving up these secrets and your family on the line, just push them out of the picture. They're gone, okay? Everything you've learned in this video, that's the high priority now, okay? Don't worry about them. Just focus on me and everything I've taught you. If you enjoyed this video and the absolute crap that I just spouted from my mouth, make sure you like the video and subscribe to my channel. That way, I'll be able to convince others that I actually know what I'm talking about, that I'm, I'm qualified in something. I'm, I'm not, but I, I like to pretend. Playing pretend is fun. It's, it's, it's a good time, okay? Subscribe.